Hello everybody and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. Today we are going to be reviewing comics from 5 to 8, was it Norman? Yep. Of the MLT comic by IDW, which is the Nightmare Right Arc. With me I have Norman Sanso. Hello guys. And brownie reviewer extraordinaire, Silver Quill. And in my next review you'll get two drinking games your liver <laughs> won't make it. <laughs> My liver can get through another one. I already almost keel over because of the apples. <laughs> the funny thing is that I was using water, so I don't know how that worked. <laughs> you probably had to go to the bathroom a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, my poor bladder. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, this comic series, this, uh, this arc... Wow, I really don't know where to start tackling this one, because it is actually the... After the first one with Queen Chrysalis, it was a good combination of comedy and uh, and action and fantasy and grim dark. Actually, the first one, where the stakes seem really high and the tone seems fairly dark. Like I don't remember many many comedic comedic situations or jokes in this in this uh, arc. So I really don't know where to start talking about it. Okay, I think we should say right away what we thought of it, and then we can just uh, review it and take a look at it. What do you guys think? I totally agree. There you go. Okay, so uh, oh, I'm going to leave myself for last, uh, because it's uh, almost rarity-centric uh, arc, and I'm pretty sure people want to know what I think of it, being the rarity fan, but what do you guys think of the, of the comic? Alrighty, well, to be honest, this was the comic series that said to me, okay, I, I'm not going to count these as canon. Because I'm afraid it starts off with the single greatest contradiction in MLP. I'm just going to read the transcript from episode one of Friendship is Magic, very premiere. Using the magic of the elements of harmony, she, Celestia, defeated her younger sister and banished her permanently in the moon. And it's amazing how one letter changes a lot of meaning. So many fans think Nightmare Moon was banished on the moon. But it says in the moon. Hmm. I thought it was to the moon. It's it's in the moon. The mayor in the moon, huh. like like literally in the moon. Apparently, yeah, a prison. So the premise of this comic is that there are nightmare forces on the moon. And I got to be honest that when I read that, I was like, wait, no, this is something the fans mix up every now and again. And they're like, well, this, I, I you're right. It is a very, it has a much darker overtone. I love Nightmare Rarity's design, and the and the idea that you know to beat the elements of harmony, you just have to take one out of the equation. Something that I think uh, most villains would do well to remember. <laughs> so I really enjoy it, but at the same time, as much as it's an enjoyable story, I can't say, oh, this is continuity. This could happen in the show. Because the structure is a contradiction. Yeah, that is absolutely true in that, not only that, but it's it, it, not just a structure, but just the fact that, because in the first four comics, we didn't have a peak of Princess Luna, except for the, par the the very last panel of the entire comic, where you can see Luna with a map wondering where the hell she is. And uh, it was put like uh, as a little joke, but within the continuity of the comics, uh, the first time we see Princess Luna in the comics, she still looks like the way she looked in the first two episodes of season one. She doesn't have the flowy mane. She doesn't have the bombastic voice or anything. It looks like it looks like Luna from season one and from the uh, it, actually the way she feels. She feels like the fanon interpretation of Luna between seasons one and two. In that she's meek, she's insecure, she's scared, she's not so uh, sure of herself, and that I can totally see how that can rustle some Jimmy's. But aside from not being continuity and not being within canon, uh, like that's that's completely uh, detached from it because, like Andy Price said, the comics are tier two. The show is tier one canon. So I don't think that not even they were counting it as within the show, uh, the, the comics to be part of it. Yeah, and yet many people have uh, tried to argue this comics. Uh... Continuity, especially in light of the more recent uh, refle Reflections arc. I don't know what to say, because um, when I first read the first four, it was, oh, this is a nice continuity towards the Chrysalis arc, where, okay, Chrysalis banished, what happened to Chrysalis? Is she dead? Is she alive? What happened to her? We got a resolution in the comics. And in this one, when I first saw Princess Luna, I was a bit confused, as in, okay... 
why is she season one and not season two? And so on. But if we want to play head cannons now, this could be introduced somewhere in between season one and two, where she's starting to regain her self confidence and blah 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 blah. And now we know how she turned into the Luna we all know and love, except for now we there's a contradiction to her speech pattern was different. Yeah, it doesn't match. So, yeah. Well, if we were going to count each uh, comic uh, drawn by different artists and by written by different people, then they all will have their different continuity because Andy Price, he writes for Princess Luna the same way that Amy Larson writes for Princess Luna with the thou and thus and thine and thee. And uh, uh, like Heather Neufer, who's the writer of this uh, arc, uh, Heather writes Luna like very meek and careful, but can also be bombastic every now and then. But she's also very self, um, uh, very, but she keeps a lot to herself. Hmm. So it all depends on the writer. It all depends on the artist. Here, here's an interesting question for you guys uh, regarding Princess Luna, to be exact. Do you think that when they got the project to do this art, the script they got? from the episode did not reflect how Princess Luna is yet? Mm, this kind of came out a while after uh, Luna Eclipse, so I have a hard... I imagine they had that resource. The, it it actually came out kind of two years after Luna Eclipse was premiered, because this was... Uh, the first comic arc was released with season three in full swing. It was released between December and, uh, and February. Mm-hmm. Uh, December 2012, the, uh, February 2013, and the the Nightmare Rarity arc, it was released during the summer of 2013. You guys also have to remember that production comes later when the show premieres. Like right now, the MLP comic book crew, they have the script for season five. They have it and they can go through it to see what is canon and what's not canon and how they can mess around with what will be in season five. So they have that. So whatever we see doesn't really correlate to what they have. I know that they had the season four scripts. I thought season five was still in the writing phase right now. Well, depending on uh, what they have right now, but still, we're. Um, I'm just throwing out what I what I know. They need to find out what toys they got to market first. Yeah. We have a we have another playset. We have another playset. We have another castle. Let's put it in the in, let's put it in the show. Let's put it in the comic. Uh <laughs> That, but that's it with every, with everything. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, but one of the reasons why they killed Optimus Prime on the, on the original Transformers, uh, TV show was because they had to promote a new line of toys. Oh, yeah. And Optimus Prime wasn't part of it, so they decided to go ahead and kill him. <laughs> Big mistake. You know, it's, no, but you know what? It's kind of, we're kind of lucky that in My Little Pony, instead of killing, killing Twilight Sparkle, they turn her into a princess. <laughs> like, we could have gotten so much worse. You guys have no idea. <laughs> well, I was in, I was in the theater when they killed off Prime. Oh, I God. shed manly tears. <laughs> you were a kid. Don't, don't, don't pretend. You were crying like a baby. They you know were what? manly kid tears. <laughs> I will be, I will be perfectly honest with you. I have, uh, I, I like Transformers, all that. I watched it as a little kid, but I didn't have that sense of connection with them because I I was never a big fan of giant robots. To me, the thing was dinosaurs, not not giant robots. <laughs> so I I, di- I didn't cry when I saw Optimus Prime die. And actually, I watched the movie few a few years ago. Didn't cry either. I was like, well, I can I can understand why some people might find it emotional, but I didn't cry. And I cry at the top of a hat. The death of Optimus Prime was in <laughs> wasn't so emotional for me. I'm sorry. Uh, now if they'd killed Grimlock, oh, then man, you'd be yeah. balling. Oh, my... <laughs> not, not Grimlock. Yeah. Oh, my my favorite was always Ironhide. Oh yeah, Ironhide's cool. I cool. was very happy because that's probably the only Transformer they didn't. That's f- not a word. In the Michael Bay movies, he was still a boss. He was still badass, and he was still useful. And they go and kill him in the third movie. <laughs> God damn it. Uh... Anyway, well, we are, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, we're, di- yeah, yeah. we're digressing. We are digressing. Let's, let's get back on track. Here. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Ponies, uh, second comic book arc, Nightmare Rarity. <laughs> so, uh, but you didn't say what you think about it, Norman. What do you think of the comic? Hmm, here's a, here's a thing right now that I have in my head. It's, how do I put this? I read it a while back when it first released, and I doubt that I read the second time through. Um, 
I didn't have the chance to read it, um, to freshen up on today's review. So I'm going everything from memory and from what I skipped through pages. And to be honest, the whole story arc is not that memorable. There are a few memorable scenes, but the whole story, it's at a loss for me. It's a very simple story when you think about it. Uh, Rarity gets kidnapped by the denizens of the moon. They go to the moon to rescue her. But then they have turned her into the new Nightmare Moon, which is Nightmare Rarity. Mm -hmm. And now she's threatening to destroy all of the quests here, starting with Ponyville. So mm -hmm. they have to go and stop them. And they don't have the elements of harmony to prevent this because she is one of the elements of harmony. And oh, she's been corrupted. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a very simple story. I can understand why it might not be memorable. Yeah, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying that I can't remember anything. And and also have to regard that the time when I last read this was when it was first published, which was March of 2013. Mm. So, yeah, it's a while back. It is a while back. Um, hmm. You know what? I, I only read it once. I reread the last issue because probably the last issue is the absolute best of, of, of all the four. And I can see why it's not memorable, but I want to I want to think that you're saying it's not memorable because of the story, uh, for the story, because the visuals in this oh, yeah. comic are unbelievable. Like I said before, James, like I said before, the story is not memorable, but the scenes were. Yeah, it's it's it, it gets to the point, like, the moment where Luna takes Applejack's lasso, uh, uh, like, puts a magic spell on it, and they literally lasso the moon, <laughs> and they walk to the moon on a magic rope, that's where I said, okay, this, this, this comic has gone Miyazaki, uh, Princess Mononoke, uh, <laughs> insane. <laughs> <laughs> on the visual style. That's that's uh, that's that's where this is going, right? And it only keeps getting better. Uh, mm -hmm. The design of Nightmare Rarity is awesome. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the design of the different creatures in the moon is brilliant. The way they tackle the different landscapes when it comes to nightmares was great, including a callback to Rainbow Dash's micro oh. with uh, the 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 gremlins in Rainbow Dash's uh, nightmare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was really cool. And the way that they slowly turn Rarity into the nightmare. That was really good as well. Like, it's not they catch her and they, bam, turn her into it. No, it takes a whole issue for her to turn evil. That's uh, that's great. And I think that's the problem and the advantage with this comic. It, it has four issues to work the story into it. Mm -hmm. But it it does have, it does take too much time faffing around and not doing, not moving the story forward. Which comes in as a burden in the last issue where Twilight and company get magic glowy powers just because. Yeah, that was... I I want to hate that part, but I personally cannot hate it because I like the way they worded it in the script. Like, it is true. It does come out of nowhere just because. But I like how Twilight starts saying, Oh, please, stop being <sighs> your crazy, wonderful selves. And I'm like, the way they word it, Oh, it gets me. I'm sorry. It's like <laughs> too much, too much. I like it. I, li I like that way, but I can understand that it does come out of nowhere. That is a very heartfelt line, but then we get full grade cheese when the ponies arrive. And <laughs> Pinky says, silly, scary lady. Friendship is stronger than fear will ever be. Oh, my God. But if you really think about it, that is true. <laughs> it's true yeah, but it is cheesy. It's second only to my love will give you strength. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it, 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 it goes all the way back to oh no, this is a My Little Pony fan fiction. It it, it is goes rider levels of of uh, kiddy silly Care Bear story. Yeah. Mm, well, no no comment there, man. Uh, have you seen Dark Heart in the uh, Care Bear <laughs> show? Nah. Uh, yeah. um, but never mind that. I can totally understand that. It's that yeah, it, it does come out of nowhere. <laughs> As you guys might notice, we are not seeing clearly what we think, if we liked it, if we didn't like it, if like we were going to give it an, a, a rate or not. And we are kind of like dancing around the issue because this is a very difficult arc to review because so many things happen on it. It is because there are strong and weak parts to it. I think it's a very mixed uh, presentation. It's a mixed bag. It, it is a mixed bag. Um, 
then you have the, the, the story of the denizens in the moon that were turned into nightmare beings and uh, trying to bring them back. You have Rarity turning into a nightmare and then bringing her back. You have Spike with his crush on Rarity. You have Luna uh, getting back her confidence and the trust of the Pony Billions on her again. Uh, my gosh, there, there, is a, there is a lot going on in this one. Compared to the first one that was a straightforward adventure story, this one has way too many stories. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they are unevenly covered. Like, it, it, it is kind of funny how in the third issue, they barely touch upon Princess Luna turning into um, the leader that we all want her to be. Mm-hmm. And they make so much emphasis on Spike's crush on Rarity, when actually that is the least important of all the stories. True that. I mean, if you really want to ship them, why not do in a micro or something? Yeah, why not do Because he had to raise lizard people. <laughs> <laughs> Why not do a friends forever or, or something like that? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, he has to hang out with Princess Celestia. Never mind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah like uh, that, one. that was that was a very good one. Actually, so far of the of the friends forever, I didn't hate a single one of them. Oh well, yeah, me too. I mean, we, we're really digressing from this one. We really don't want to review oh. this one, do we? <laughs> <laughs> well, like you say, it's because this this particular comic is a little more all over the place. I mean, we get to see every character's worst fear, but against the backdrop of there's going to be a nightmare invasion, it we're kind of it feels more like a distraction than a character moment. It is. Mm, it so is. True. It's 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 the perfect example of a comic like uh many episodes of this show like uh, uh like in um, in Dre- no in in Treja. For example, mm-hmm. Tradia is not the best episode of the season, but it saves from being one of the worst because it has so much detail put into it and it has so many different things in it. The same way with this comic arc in that it, it gets saved by the details and it has some really mm. good, very nifty, uh, fantastic details. Uh, may I may I indulge a little bit and tell you my absolute favorite one? Oh, because sure, it, it, is, it is the silliest detail of all. In that, okay, in the fourth issue, there is one scene where Luna gets sapped by Nightmare Rarity and she gets kind of like taken down. And Luna is saying, I can't, I can't, my fears are too strong. And then every pony billion gets behind her and uh, she regains her strength and all that. And she's like, citizens of Ponyville, I promise you that I will not succumb to the darkness again. If you please forgive me for my mistakes in the past, I promise you I will never abandon you like I abandoned the people in the moon. Will you please forgive me and give me another chance? And then, out of nowhere, like this, it's a coming out of nowhere moment. Uh, Trixie shows up along with Princess Celestia and Trixie says, uh, every pony deserves a second chance. Even a third chance. And I am like, that is so cool. That is Trixie and nobody else saying that. Because she, uh, she screwed up with, uh, in Bose Busters. She screwed up in, in, uh, Magic Duel. And yeah, this is not show continuity on anything, but the comics take from the show. And if we take Trixie's personality from the show and put it in the comics, that is so cool that Strix is saying that. And I like that. That That's my absolute favorite mon- moment of the entire arc. Is that mm-hmm. Trix is saying that one line. And it's a detail. It's a throwaway joke. Yet it's so cool. Very little character moment that says way more than the entire arc about Princess Luna or Rarity. <laughs> it's pretty unbelievable. True. I mean, those little details are awesome in this book. Like, I'm looking through it right now when, for, for me, um. Like I said, I read this like last year and looking through it again, not reading and looking at the visuals, it's really awesome. There's one scene that I'm looking right now. It's literally a scene where um, Mr. Cake and Mrs. Cake were fighting against the moon shadow thingies, uh, Trixie doing her magic. And on the last side of that panel is Doctor Who's playing with his... Sonic screwdriver. Yeah, Sonic screwdriver. I mean, that little detail, it's... Oh my goodness, this is awesome. Just wait until you get to Zen and the Art of Gazebo. Ah. <laughs> oh god, that's that is that is that is perfect. That is the that is a combination of the the first arc and the second because it's chock full of details and story wise and narrative wise is amazing. But actually, leading into that though, I remember people complained that Big Mac was the only Pony who didn't really fight. 
Oh, he. Let me double he, check. He didn't. He's, he didn't. He's, he's pulling the cart for Granny Smith, who is kicking all kinds of tail. But uh, he himself never fights. Hmm, that and, we know and, of. And we and well, if you, if you don't see it, you didn't, it didn't happen. But that's my <laughs> philosophy. Yeah, but um, no, you're absolutely right. Because I remember at one point on the uh, when the fight is kind of like an in, in an impasse before the main six arrive from the moon, you can see all the other pony villains. They are beat up and they are like injured and any, and everything. And you see Hoity Toity out of all the ponies with his hair uh, bl- uh, like messed up and his glasses are broken. And I'm like, if Hoity Toity was fighting, why wasn't Big Mac? Someone needs to take care of Granny Smith. Uh, she's doing just fine on her own with the kamikaze karate club with elderly <laughs> respect. <laughs> but, but as fun as this is, there's one other thing about um, Nightmare Rarity in particular. Well, two things. First is the name. Mm-hmm. You had Princess Luna becomes Nightmare Moon. And Rarity becomes Nightmare Rarity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not really pushing yourselves on the naming conventions, though. <laughs> But, uh, well, Sorry? the forces of darkness are getting lazy. <laughs> with the names, yes, with the names they are. Yeah, that, that was, and it's also isn't it? Is it just me because I'm Spanish, or is it a very awkward name to say, like nightmare rarity? And it's like that 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 doesn't roll off the tongue. It's actually kind of like a tongue twister. Yeah, I agree with you, man. But I'm Asian, so yeah, we, you cannot we'll you, you, you cannot say it three times really fast because it will twist your tongue. Nightmare rarity, nightmare rarity, nightmare rarity. <laughs> hmm. Nightmare rarity, nightmare rarity, nightmare rarity. But in America, we don't roll our R's, which is actually rather boring. <laughs> so everything sounds cooler when you roll the R's. <laughs> Gee, so that's pirates! True. But that's not until a few arcs later. Um... <laughs> I must now ship Rarity with the Spaniard pony. She'll love how he rolls the R's for her. I'm up. I'm up. (laughs) I I can do it. (laughs) Enough, James. (laughs) No, but still, still. My love and respect for Rarity is mostly as a character because she's very much like me. Hmm. Even in the drama queen department. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, boy. But um, back onto the comics. Um, I, like I said before, it's hard to pinpoint what do I remember, what I like, what I didn't like. But overall, when I really think about it from what I remember from the past, it was a pretty interesting story. Every time when a chapter ends, it makes me go with anticipation for the next one. Like, I really want to know what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next. And as an issue where you have to wait for a few months to get the next one, it gets you really hyped. Believe the hype. Indeed. <laughs> But uh, but the second point about Nightmare Rarity, uh, other than the, the lazy naming, and this, this is the big thing for this arc. There are fan fictions like Past Sins where Nightmare Moon becomes this separate entity. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Nix. And, and in this comic, Nightmare Moon, at first I thought, okay, they've made a Rarity in an image of Nightmare Moon. Except that then she flat out says, you may have defeated me before, but now I've got one of your friends. Mm-hmm. And I like you. You're turning Nightmare Moon into a mental parasite, rather than Luna's fall from grace, and that kills her character. And again, I know we're going to say second tier uh, continuity, but a lot of fans argue this. A lot of fans have adopted this into the main canon, hmm. and I feel like doing so cheapens Luna. I I have to agree to that. Um, with that, but in terms of an evil villain kind of character, this is really interesting because the parasite known as the Nightmare could go into anyone and move on to rule said universe or world. Because think about it, this is almost something like the symbiote for Venom. Yeah, but the symbiote from Venom was something from our space. What Silver Quill is saying that in the comics mm. is almost done pretty much like it's like a, like a, like you said a mental parasite in the in the tv show it's more an emotional state like uh okay i'm going to make a i'm going to make a comparison with digimon please nobody kill me but okay. if you remember in the first generation of pokemon of or in the first season of digimon when they try to turn it the, the when kai tries to turn um 
uh, Agumon into mm. Mega Agumon, and he forces it. Instead of creating Mega Agumon, he or, or however you call that other Digimon, he creates another one that is kind of like made out of bones and looks absolutely terrifying. And because he forced it. So what if what happened to Luna was uh, 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 she was taken by this uh, jealousy, by her, uh, yeah, but by, by pure and utter negative emotions and turned into Nightmare Moon. That very much, the, the show pretty much confirmed that, that that's how it happened in the, in the premiere of season four. I do agree with that in terms where the Nightmare itself is an entity that feeds off your fear or feeds off your insecurity. Where Luna's insecurity was she was jealous of her sister and the popularity that she was getting. And the nightmare is just feeding off that. And once the nightmare got what he needs, infect the body and take over the host. Well, but are you seeing that for the show? I mean, that's kind of what happens in the comics, from what they say. Yeah, but we don't really know how Princess Luna turned that way. We don't really see any thing that was told by us. But, you know, this is all hit canon now. This is really hit yeah. canon territory. I, I feel like the show really did just flat out say, in fact, again, reading from the transcript, it says, the bitterness in the young one's heart had transformed her into a wicked mare of darkness, Nightmare Moon. Mm-hmm. The, the thing that I like about this, this is totally internal. Luna's fall is an example to kids of how you can really go off the path if you let your negativity or your you know, unhappy emotions control you. If you introduce that there was a, a this nightmare entity or this dark force outside of Luna, then suddenly it's not about her. It's not her consequences of her actions. She just becomes a pawn and a victim. And that's much less powerful in a show that's trying to present itself as morals and uh, mm. and sort of a, I view it as sort of a modern Aesop's fable. Mm. I can see your point of view, Silver, where in terms of um, magical power, uh, powerful magical creatures where they are treated as godlike, have this fear or ability where when they go to negative, like how Luna was, she becomes an evil persona of herself. And then the, but then also it raises the question of uh, how did the elements turn her good again? I mean, I've kind of been joking with a friend about this. If, you, if the bad guys turn you evil, it's brainwashing. If the mm-hmm. good guys turn make you turn good it's purification <laughs> yes take a rainbow to the face you are getting you get better now Whee! Yeah. <laughs> it's, face the it, rainbow. there was a there was a <laughs> there was a comic where rarity is visiting manhattan and no canterlot canterlot she's visiting canterlot and then nightmare moon shows up again and she's like ha 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 I'm back now. I'm going to take over everything, and then all, all of a sudden, a bunch of paint buckets fall on her face, and like it, the the buckets have the different colors of the rainbow, and then she turns back to Luna. Then you look up, and it's Hazy t- uh, Turnip Track, the redneck pony, who just dropped all of the buckets on top of Luna, on top of Nightmare Moon, turn her back to Luna, and he's like, "Hey, Rarity, what are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like, um. Uh, trying to figure that out is like trying to explain how some things in a world of fantasy and magic work. Like, um, we do have established that they have energy and that they have other stuff and that, that works on a, on a way or another. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even start uh, thinking how the elements of harmony work yeah. uh, to turn something from good to evil. Then we will never stop uh, discussing uh, how does rainbow power turn Tyrek uh, from um, yeah, yeah. from uh, a, a tyrant, massive guy full of magic to a wrinkly, uh, super small guy back to the way he used to be. That's easy. He j- it just shows him the sales figures for Rainbow Powers <laughs> after the finale, and he feels so impotent against them that he shrinks. He's like, no, my masculinity! Ah! Oh, boy. <laughs> what do you mean I don't get a figure? Ah! The but fact that will go through me. Even Discord get a toy. I cannot get one. Ah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. But okay, okay. Um, final verdict on the Nightmare Rarity comic. Mm-hmm. Because as you can see, we haven't said... It, it's funny. I thought I, I, I thought we were going to start saying, okay, this is what we think of the comic. But no, we, we, we are not saying any of that. We are, yeah. we are dancing around the issue. It's like we are kind of shy about saying the... I... 
for for my uh, for my defense, I haven't read it in a while. But looking through it, it's hard to say what's good or bad because each chapter is its own series or its own story plot. So once you finish a chapter, you move on to the next one to find out what happens next. And everything is kind of neat and tidy in one pack. So it's hard for me to say, oh, this one sucks because of this reason. Oh, this is awesome because of this. Like I said earlier on, the visuals or certain scenes make it really memorable. And in my eyes, it, it, the comic breaks even, in essence. Uh, like I say, in terms of you know the foundation, there's cracks in it that kind of niggle at the back of my mind throughout the whole story. But there, I do like Nightmare Rarity's design. I like how... <laughs> actually, I like that, one, her look changes with each issue. <laughs> she she accessorizes in each issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She mm-hmm. she keeps getting, like, more and more jewelry on her. Maybe that's her rarity side, trying to poke, poke out. And then also, even though she's been transformed, we actually see rarity, normal rarity, in every issue. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, a fascinating, you know, sort of reintegration. So you never forget that there's the real pony in there. Mm. Yeah. And and the, uh, I never got to comment that this shows Luna and Celestia leading, ah. so, which has been which has been a gripe of mine in the show that it's always oh Twilight, can you go take care of this for us? <laughs> no, I will. Celestia is saying I will prepare the defenses here at home, and boy does she. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she does. But why did she take civilians on? (laughs) uh, Because we've seen the effectiveness of the Candlelock Guard. Oh, yeah. Mm. I think the Candlelock Guard are in, like, a few panels somewhere. Yeah, but not all of them. (laughs) There are a couple of guards there, but... Yeah, but you know the the reason why they pick civilians, uh, just to make a little lecture because before I drop into my opinion, mm-hmm. is that the reason why they pick civilians is the same reason why uh, some of the smaller uh, characters are on the final action sequences mm. on on uh, on. I mean, hate to do this comparison, but on the Transformers movies, <laughs> like that's why you have Bibi's uh, Bibi's butt and uh, Bibi's butt showing up at the end of the third movie saving the day like because some people like that some people like the background character or the small character showing up for a minute have a hero moment and then drop off the face of the earth <laughs> uh, because there are, there are fans of those characters there are fans of Dr. Hooves and fans of Chili and fans of the cakes mm-hmm, uh, yeah. so that is the fun part that's why sh- uh, they appear at the end yeah true that I have to say all in all it's a really fun and wonderful read like if you have the chance to go read it do because we're not saying Uh, that it's bad we're just saying that it's hard for us to review it because all of it is amazing and confusing at the same time i didn't say anything about it yet oh okay sorry james i didn't say if i like it or not no i'm sorry james (laughs) james what do you think do you like it do you hate it (laughs) okay um, back then, I wouldn't have considered it to be the best, and right now I don't consider it to be the best, especially when we have other other arcs that are way better, like the the, the pirate arc or the or the the one that just finished reflections. Those are mm-hmm. excellent stories; they're very well told. Uh, narratively speaking, is an absolute jumble mess. Uh, uh, what it does with the mythology of the of the show, uh, it does try to do its own thing uh, and it kind of fails in that regard Mm -hmm. because out of all the mythology that they have to touch, they go and touch Nightmare Moons, which is kind of like the flimsiest, least expanded upon, yet way more interesting mythology of them all. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because you're talking about a character that used to be evil and now is good, serving good and protecting those uh, that live in uh, in, in her world. And when it comes to character and all that, it does follow the motions and it doesn't that do much with it. Like what is uh, uh, like Applejack is very Applejack. They don't do much with that. Twilight is very Twilight. The same with Fluttershy. The same with Pinky. And the same with Rarity. And the same with Rainbow Dash. They don't do, actually. Funny enough, the character that gets the most development maybe is Spike mm. because he has a very powerful hero moment where he escapes. And he rescues the main six out of their cages. 
that is a very powerful hero moment. But the visuals and the uh, and the details save this comic from being mediocre. Like it is, it is good. It's okay. Mm-hmm. I, I totally agree with you there, James. Yeah. That's that's really? that's my what? Oh no! I'm sorry. I was just gonna say it breaks even. Exactly, like what you said. It breaks even. Like you said it before. Uh, when you were talking, when you were giving your opinion, I was like, "That is the perfect description for this comic. It breaks even, like the flaws get compensated with the with the virtues." Anyway, gents, um, I think we're really dancing around in. But really, we we're really dancing around this issue. So I would suggest that if we could, we should go on to one of the next micros, the Rainbow Dash micros, if possible. Are you up for it? I'm down with it. I'm up for it too. Yay, so should we take a break and move on, or should we just continue on? Because I need to read up on this. <laughs> well, if you need to take a break and just browse through, I, I remember pretty well, and of course I'm opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about you, James? You want to do it? Uh, uh, sure, well, I've been drawing and talking at the same time all this time, so I can totally do it. Uh there is there is no problem with me. I don't need a I don't need a break. I can keep on going. And if, we, if we're going to talk about the Rainbow Dash micro, expect me to. You, you can have a drinking game on this one. <laughs> uh, take a shot every time I use the word weird. <laughs> so anywho, um, let's end this current one and move on to the next one. Let's All do. right. Okay, so uh, this has been the NBS show reviews. Uh, that was the nightmare rarity. Arc, it's issues number five to number eight of the official IDW MLP comic. Mm-hmm. I have been James Cork. And I have been Norman Sanzo. And I will be Silver Quill at some point. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Bye. Bye bye. I thought this would be much longer, like the arc. <laughs> <laughs>